good to be back here at Penn State after this whole uh, funny thing of COVID. Um, that's my first uh, conference uh, in real life for a while now, so I really appreciate uh, being here again. Um, I'm here to uh, present you some of the things we did for the last year. Um, as most of you know, you shouldn't let me without supervision. Uh, <laughs> So we somehow end up creating an MDM and an IDP for a year, uh, for the last year. And to be honest, the product is out for just a month. And that's the first public appearance of the product in a conference. So it will be a first for us at Mac Admins. <laughs> and before uh, going into details and showing you what we did, uh, I think it's interesting to start by why we exist. And uh, for that, I would like to have uh, Olivier um, explaining you how we end up here in that so bad situation. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Johan. And thank you, everyone, for being here today with us. Um, let me start with a little story, a subway story, as uh, many of them. This one happened in the Parisian subway. It was uh, two years ago. I was managing my uh, home company. It was a, a outfit producer, French outfit producer with a team of 20 people selling uh, high quality product through uh, the internet and, uh, and physical shops. And uh, two years ago, during a Friday afternoon, I was configuring uh, like three Mac book for three new employees um, arriving the, the, the next Monday. And obviously nothing happened had, uh, as expected. And I found myself the Friday evening in the subway with two Mac book in my backpack, one in my hands, the making uh, an OS update, so I couldn't even move anymore. I was like that. <laughs> and uh, I, spent, I spent the rest of my weekend working on uh, configuring, setting up all the, the access, all the, uh, the devices and so on for my new, uh, new commerce uh, coming on, uh, on the, the Monday. And a few days after, I just wondering myself, I was wondering what happened? Why did I spend so much time on this kind of task? And so I started to find a solution on the internet. So I found plenty of really powerful MDM on the market, of course. But all of them seems to require more consultants to make it worse, to make it work, sorry, uh, than the people I had in my own team. So it doesn't make sense. So as an entrepreneur, if it doesn't exist, then I will create it. It should be easy, no? <laughs> The first try I did, it, it was with a dev studio, paid on my own money um, to create um, the product I will be proud of. And we did, and we did it. We built an MDM product. And as any startup, we started to show the product to a lot of different kind of people. I met a lot of CEO, CTO, IT manager, end user, and so on. And one of them advised me to contact someone named Johan Gini, I didn't know. Maybe you, you know him, I don't know. And it's what I did. So I call a book, I book a call, sorry, with Johan. <laughs> <laughs> and talking with him, I discovered that the dev studio didn't really care about the security and the Apple agreement. And moreover, that I should focus on a huge part, an important part, the IDP, the identity provider. So. We talk a lot, each other, and it was not difficult to align our vision, our values, and uh, the idea to make a great product, product uh, together. So this is the story how I met my CTO, Johan, and how with FX behind you, as a CEO, <laughs> CEO sorry, we uh, start raising money and with no product at all to realize the vision. So, that's it for me. Uh, I know that you are here today to, uh, to know a little bit more about the technical uh, products, think of details products. So I'm going to let Johan explain you everything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. We, we started to, to create Bravas with some idea of. Uh, yeah, the transmitter is actually on. But OK. So yeah, we, we started to create Bravas with some kind of uh, value in mind. And I think it's important with, uh, for us to share the value first before the product, um, because as soon as you understand why we made it, 
you will start to understand how we made it. So, one of the um, lessons I've learned from my past life as a consultant was almost all organizations have the exact same needs. We all use super complex products to all do the same absolute things. And regardless of the size, actually the simplest deployment I've made as a consultant was for the largest customer I had. So, based on that, we seen that basically most MDM on the market are more like advanced frameworks. You need to have development skills, to have a lot of um, advanced skills to use it powerfully. And if you do have these skills, indeed you can do wonderful things. But the steps, the learning steps to uh, use the MDM for the first time, or even if you are knowledgeable enough, the time you need to spend on your MDM to have something working at scale is way too um, cost, uh, costly, I would say. Um, in some situations, it's completely legitimate. But in most, we do things that we can do better. We should be way more simpler than what it is on the market right now. So, as a first goal, Bravas, we try to be a simple product. We won't be your super crazy MDM that you can use with weird automation script to do some sort of advanced situation. There is plenty of, of people on the market that are really good at that. We won't be a complex MDM used to be a framework, made to be a framework. We try to be holistic. As some of you know me, my vision for the last decade is the same. You as IT people are not managing devices. You are helping people to work. And actually, most of the people you work with, if they could work without a computer, they would prefer it. So <laughs> our job as an IT professional is to help people to succeed in their work and to manage the device for that purpose. So one of the key parts as an MDM provider is to also manage the identity side. And an MDM without an IDP integrated, in my opinion, it's half of the work. So, when we try to create Bravas, we try to consider that, okay, MDM and IDP are the same thing. If you don't consider it the same thing, you are missing part of the, of the picture. So that's what we did. We considered both things at the same time and started a year ago, white paper, but, or no code, started from scratch with the idea that, okay, an MDM is an IDP, and an IDP is the MDM. We need to, burn, to make it all together from the ground up. <coughs> so, you may wonder what we did differently in that vision of simplicity, of integration, and, and etc. So, the first thing is simpler is better, as always. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you already seen that kind of configuration profile. Is it better? Yeah. yeah. So that kind of insane configuration profile, the infamous restriction configuration profile, uh, which is like a long list of really detailed uh, restrictions, this should not exist. This is raw capabilities of your managed endpoints. But this is not what, as IT people, we want to handle. Like, I'm pretty sure every single person in the room use it the same way, with the same set of restrictions and with the same set, same experience of failing. Because, oh yeah, to deny an app to be installed by the end user, you need to think about App Store, but you also need to think about enterprise app coming from outside, and also need to think about this old thing that is called iTunes, and they can actually inject app by USB. It makes no sense to ask everyone to know that kind of low-level details. As IT professional, we expect that MDM should provide creative capabilities. It is a job to the MDM to understand how to manage some kind of operating system and to provide curated capabilities such as allow personal content only if it is isolated from the pro content to the end user. That kind of policy as IT people we want to express up to the MDM vendor to understand what is possible depending on the platform we are currently managing. And it will be different 
for that exact statement, result will be different on the Mac than iOS because both platforms have different capabilities. It is the job of the MDM to do that kind of curation. Same, for example, block all options to install apps outside of enterprise catalog. It will go in weird detail if you go on macOS, for example. And I'm pretty sure when you look at this one, most organizations didn't apply it correctly. Most organizations didn't block the capabilities to download and run an app from the desktop. 80% of the time I did not it, this one was not handled correctly. Because that's low level details and you can't expect every single customer to spend so much time as we do to understand how macOS is working. Also, MDM should be useful out of the box. So many MDMs so far require an army of IBM consultants to make it work when you buy it. That makes no sense. The baseline, the state of the art, should be here by default and should be easy to get. The custom profile that we all are used to is expert mode. Of course, it can be useful in some time, and we may in the future in Bravas implement it, but it does not have to be the normal way. So Bravas out of the box is doing a bit of, uh, the work a little bit differently. First thing is we deny the right to the customer to shoot them send me the foot, which means all unsigned devices are encrypted by default. No choice on that. It's assigned single device user, it's encrypted. There is no way in a normal situation you want it to be unencrypted. And if you are in a weird situation, there is other vendors. But for the ones that want to go straight to the point and have a team on the MDM side backing them and um, having a global vision of what happened in different countries and different scale in different kind of organization and what should be the result of uh, all those learning to create something good, that's how we did it. So encryption is mandatory for assigned devices as well as a mandatory local passcode. If you are deploying in a corporation, there is no way you want your devices without passcode. And by the way, passcode are the only kind of pass user will be exposed to with Bravas. We have no passwords, no online passwords. Yep. <laughs> so, that's one of the key points of being both MDM and IDP. We can easily do on version zero what others are taking so long to do. Since we manage both IDP and MDM, we are able to do the device trust between the both and, and between the two. And basically, out of the box, without any configuration need, Bravas will deploy a certificate on your endpoint and use it for your IDP to authenticate your user on your managed devices. And you may wonder about accessing from non-managed devices, then what we do here is using correctly WebAuthn, which means you can use either a FIDO2 token, such as a YubiKey, or a passkey if you want to, to allow your users to access their corporate resources from non-managed devices, if you want to. So no password at all. And that's, this is one of the reasons why we didn't start it as a startup to integrate different products like open source products. We just didn't want it to have a solution that has password and disabling it. We just created from the ground up something that do not have password capabilities at all. So no risk of vulnerabilities, no risk of uh, wrong um, policies being set. It just <coughs> does not exist. And also we think that scalability it should be um, the rule and should be here to lead us as a decision pattern. For example, when you manage both IDP and MDM at the same time, there is some smart thing you can do. Like for example, consider that you have newcomers. At one point you will create them in your directory service with your corporate email address. As soon as you do that, if you inform that uh, Brabas that for example, Google Workspace is your email provider for that specific domain. 
Brabus will automatically understand when you create a user with that corporate email domain that these users need to be assigned to Google Workspace on the IDP side, pushed to Google Workspace on the IDP side to create the account, assign the license, create the mailbox, and also in the same time on the MDM side, it will automatically configure the mailbox on the native mail client. It has to be automatic because it's, it's obvious that 95% of the deployment will work like that. When you create an email on the domain, you create a mailbox on whoever is hosting the mailbox and you configure the manager devices to access it. In no way this has to be manual configuration when you have to deal with three different products manually. Also, we are a French company. You may hear it with my accent. <laughs> <laughs> so we are used to uh, this conflict of vision with sovereignty. Like everyone wants sovereignty, but not the neighbor wants. <laughs> Which, as a SaaS provider, is kind of a complex situation. Like, okay, everyone wants their data to be hosted locally, but it's complex to do. It's painful to do. And when you look at the market, so far, a lot of people do not support it correctly. So this, is, was, this was one of our key um, requirements from the ground up. When, when we designed the solution, we wanted to design something that can match our own requirement when we were as uh, a customer side, but of course, agnostic from the country. So right now, we are multi-cloud provider from day one. We are able to propose right now services backed by AWS in Europe or in North America. We'll soon be able also to have um, Europe-only uh, solution provided by European hosters. And the way we did it is basically, depending on the, of the domain instance you are choosing, you will be relying on different layer of provider behind you. So for example, if you go on Bravas.us, it will be hosted on AWS in Oregon, supported by us. If you go .cloud, it will be instead supported by us. .eu will be OVH supported by us. But we can also provide advanced situation like on-prem and MSP. MSP will be able to choose any provider that is supporting Kubernetes and hosting anywhere they want. We will be support tier three for the MSP, but the MSP will be the data owner and support for the customer. So we are just basically providing the solution in a way that we can do tiering on the legal side also, which will be easy for us to access all kinds of markets, especially regulated markets. As soon as a product is certified in terms of security, we can peer with any local uh, trusted partners and use them as a firewall on the legal side to uh, guarantee to the customer that us as Foringer have no access to their data. And the same thing applies for the on-prem. So we will be able to provide on-prem capabilities uh, out of the box. Um, the main difference between the two will be you will have or not authorization to resell. But for all pharmaceutical customer, banking customer, and etc., we are immediately able to provide private instance. Also for education market and government market, same thing apply. You can be like a district or a government agency and propose to your all subsidiary shared hosting. Like if you are an university, you can host your own um, cluster of, of Bravas and deploy it for all your different labs, units, and etc. And you are the data owner of it. And just as an information, we, or, or we already agreed with Electrona, Chad, to be, yeah. Uh, so they will be your first uh, MSP to work with us uh, for the United States. So thank you. So stop talking and start eventually doing a demo. So as a prepared presenter, I've uh, made all my video recording and things like that. But I think it's way more funny to do it live. 
and see if it works in real life. <laughs> so let's have fun. So I will um, follow the patterns that you will follow if you want to subscribe uh, to Bravas and go up to the deployment time. So basically, if you go at one point to the Bravas website and ask to subscribe, uh, you will end up in a page like that where we first ask you to fill your information about the legal or commercial contract contact, basically, who is buying the solutions. You fill your um, initial info, it will redirect you on uh, the subscription page. Um, you will have a promo code uh, for Penn Staters, so it's PSU 2023. Uh, it's a 30% per year. Um, please don't, do not look my, CD card, my, my credit card number. It's, <laughs> it's super secret. <laughs> okay, so you fill up your uh, pay and credit card information, your company contacts and Insta, and you are even something <laughs> like that, where you will have the freedom to choose your information settings about the company. So let's say it's PSU23, the company name, and I'm happy with the um, instance URL name, but you can personalize it if you want. Uh, so far, we are not doing any kind of enforcement on the, of the name of the instance you will create. We will do a review post-deployment to be sure that no one fill up something stupid or something um, scammy or phishing, but we'll do it after. Like that, you have the freedom to deploy your instance in, in a minute with the code name you want. If you are a company that wants to have their cloud services not using their real name, it's, it's free for you to do it. So that's it. We are subscribed. We said we want whatever name of the instance. What happened in the back? We are creating you a namespace on the, on the related Kubernetes cluster we are you selected for the hosting provider you selected. And in a minute, basically, we will send you an email with your instance information details. So basically, what happened in the back, we create the instance, we create the certificate, we create the database, we fill up the information, and we send you the welcome link in a minute. And that's a perfect time for... The email we will receive will look like that. So you have a first um, global information email that uh, will arrive. This one. And uh, explaining you what you, uh, how to deal with us, where is the help services. And you get this, a super admin access token creation. So what is it? As I've told you, we have no passwords. So there is no default password for the instance. Instead of that, we are relying on WebAuthn. So what you will get is an enrollment link for WebAuthn, and you will be exposed to what we call OTAC, one-time authorization code. This kind of code are everywhere in Bravas for as a ticket to all once. So you enter that code and it will grant you to enroll a FIDO2 token as a super admin access for Bravas. <coughs> and here basically we are using Passkey. 
So the initial super admin account of Bravas is secured by, by WebButton, so passkey, YubiKey, and etc. And you arrive on Bravas here. We think about the solution as a solution here to solve functional needs, not to expose raw capabilities, which means in terms of um, navigation, we have those three tabs at the top of the view, audit, operate, and configure, in what we expect to be the order of most use. Of course, initially, we will start by the end, starting by configuring the platform. But if you think about your daily job, uh, we don't change the configuration every day. It's something that you rarely do once the setup is done. Creating new uh, group, onboarding new apps, is not something you will do every day. In the Operate tab, you will see all um, uh, unit-based activities, like creating a user or managing a device. And in the Audit tab, this is the <coughs> less advanced feature for, so far, but that will be the most powerful, I guess, in the end. Um, we intend to be accountable. So Bravas is here to help you to be accountable in your um, information system management. So in the audit view, you will be able to see all kinds of metrics and custom reports for uh, showing how you, how, you, how you did it. Especially like if you are in a regulated industry, uh, we will be able in future to create some specific report per regulation to help you to achieve SOC 2, PCI, DSS, etc. So let's just start to configure the platform initially. And since we are at Mac Admin Pensate, let's start by doing the Apple integration. So we will start by doing uh, the integration we are all used to for MDM. Sadly, Apple does not expose any API uh, to do it uh, in a nice way. So we will go with the usual process of downloading a CSR, um, going on identity.apple.com, signing with an Apple ID that is not uh, authorized on the cloud uh, and all that thing, eventually creating a new certificate that I will document correctly for once. <laughs> so I'm not the only one who still do that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now that my MDM is able to do APNS, now my MDM is able to is need also to be able to join uh, Apple Business Manager, of course. Okay, and since I'm here, I will directly assign a device, of course. And back here, finishing the Apple mandatory process of exchange keys. And that's it. We are integrated to Apple Business Manager. And if we go on the operate list, we already see that we do have uh, devices provided by Apple, uh, Apple Business Manager, and we see them as free to use. So basically in stock, not yet deployed. Uh, one of the decisions we took in the design of Bravas is to not go into distinct interface between what is available in Apple Business Manager and configuration for the deployment and what is actually in world. It's the same view where you'll see all your devices, and if they are deployed or not, the line will be different, but you have a single view for everything. Again, keeping things simple. To deploy a use, uh, devices, again, you need a user. The whole um, organization of Bravas is made around identities. So let's create 
someone. And that's my actual real email if you need to contact me. <laughs> OK. And when we create the user, we also lead you here where we propose you to generate a code again. Again, an attack, a one-time access token. So where it will be useful is here. If I go on my demo machine. Yes. <coughs> Advanced live demo machine. Yes. <laughs> and this is where it will start to, to fail because of the network. <laughs> Seems to work. OK. You are all used to that process where you are unrolling the device, you see all the Apple screens, and at one point you have to authenticate to your MDM, at least if you use your MDM correctly. Some people are unrolling without authentication. Uh, yeah. So, what we did here is using the web authentication capabilities of uh, Apple to propose this authentication form, as you already seen. And basically what we will do here is entering the access code my admin gave me and just submitting it. By doing so, I'm um, unrolling to uh, I'm eventually enrolling to my MDM, uh, and the identity to enroll is handled by the unique code itself. You don't need username, you don't need passwords, and I'm truly wondering if my device is correctly assigned to the correct MDM. Yeah, that's why. Changing the demo a little bit. As you may know, uh, last generation of Apple devices, when you wipe them, if you're wiping them with internet connected and a profile already set, it does not refresh when you deploy. So, no problem. Same demo, other instance. Just create a new code. Oh, network connection is lost. That's demo time. Yep, that's it. So, um, what we did here is authenticating another device without username, without passwords. The one time authorization code has been created by the admin linked to an, an identity, and it's usable once. As soon as you use it, it's completely forgotten by the MDM and the IDP side. So we are deploying a device with that single code as an activation code, basically. So when you send a device to your employees, uh, regardless of where they are, all you have to do is to give them an activation code, basically. And they will pass their enrollment and will be able to then configure the local passcode. Here, the account is local, but MDM managed, so that the interactive user account created during Setup Assistant that will be managed by the MDM server. And uh, an admin account is created, of course, automatically on the back with a local random password that you will be able to fetch in the MDM. Again, this is out of the box. It shouldn't be necessary for you to have to request the MDM to do it. And same, if you took care, I never had to configure that uh, weird uh, assistant of 
what do you want in setup assistant? Well, for most people, it will be the same. Do not keep accessibility feature, never. It's not, none of your business at IT to say uh, accessibility has to be skipped. Um, do not skip location services because otherwise your time clock is set to Cupertino, which is a bit painful when you're in France. Um, but besides that, most of the features are not here to be used in the setup assistant, in a corporate environment. Even the iCloud part, you can propose your, your user to have it after, but you don't necessarily have to force them to configure it during setup assistant. So again, here we are taking um, assumptions for what is the most common setup for everyone. I know this is not um, what some people will do in advanced situation, but advanced situation is not the goal here. So we have a managed devices. And if I look at accessing my, sorry, accessing my resources, as I told you, we have no passwords. So if I try to access my launcher app, you will be proposed to authenticate with a certificate, which is associated to that specific device. And if we look at it just for a minute, we have your company name being seen. So basically it's a certificate authority trusted by all your devices by default. And, um, and um, and built in in the server. So actually when we, de we created Barabbas, we created an, an IDP, an MDM, and a PKI, a public key infrastructure, which is not visible, but which is part of the ground up of the security of the platform. And basically you will see in it some upcoming feature, like um, we have the name, the identity of the platform that you are using. So the certificate is both uh, used to authenticate the user, but also but mainly the user on a device. Which means in the future, we will be able to propose um, access policies such as you can access your accounting software, but to the condition that you are on a managed device that is up to date. This is the launcher. I know we still have some work to do on the UI maybe, but I mean, it's been only a year of work. Um, so, Slack is already in the demo because I've changed an instance, but I will show you what I did here. Uh, but before, I just want to come back to a simple slide about resources. What is this? Okay. A nightmare. If you work in a woodworking company, who is the people granted to use a hammer? Is it the hammer users <laughs> or is it the carpenters? That's one of the key points to understand. We also created Bravas to use identities correctly, not to abuse identity in a weird way. So the recommendation to use Bravas is to manage your organization with groups that are made related to uh, representing your roles and position in the company and department and things like that. <coughs> and moreover, I will show you a little upcoming feature, uh, which is domain capabilities. <coughs> we will be able in a short future to have you have um, domains discovery based services. Basically, you will come here and say, okay, uh, my domain is brava.io, and that will be used for all full time employees. And when you create this, it automatically discovers all services that we support and you are subscribed to. Um, and you could also, in the future, create something like, okay, my main domain is actually brava.io but I will create a subdomain email for external hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, as, as I've said, it's for you. And for externals. And the idea behind that is working identity with a demographic, demo, de demographic perspective and being able to say, okay, I want to assign Creative Cloud access to my whole marketing department except interns and the contractors. And this does not have to go in weird smart group configuration setting when you have to enter um, custom LDAP filters. This has to be intuitive in the uh, UI of your MDM and IDP. Um, Slack is already configured on this one, so let's go back on the other one. Let's say you want your IDP to integrate with a service provider. We will have wizard for that. So let's say we are going with Slack Enterprise. And the wizard will have multiple sections, passwordless authentication, identity management, and uh, upcoming integration for the platform. This is also one of the key benefits of being both IMDM and IDP at the same time. Here, if we consider Slack, we will be able in the same abstract resources to say, okay, Slack has to be federated to Brabas for authentication using SIML. Brabas has to push upcoming identities to Slack to create in advance identities using SCIM. But also Slack has native apps for iOS, macOS, and etc. that can be pre-configured by the MDM. So of course, we will add support for VPP to deploy your Slack enterprise on iOS, for example, and to automatically pre-configure your iOS app with what you set in your integration. And as soon as you say, okay, this department have access to Slack, obviously it will be installed on the device, or at least proposed to if you decided to do it on demand. <coughs> Right now, if I look at the other instance, I already did the integration. And if we are going to our uh, Slack demo instance, we can see in our user list that I'm existing. But let's say we have a newcomer. Someone named Tom, for example. <laughs> and that you assign this user to be member of your sorry, I didn't see C level already. <laughs> Just coming already C level. This With is not a job change announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I will put you in deep trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone's tweeting screenshots. <laughs> That's a group which is already assigned to Slack. Mm -hmm. So basically when you do that, uh, if it works, you already have your account created everywhere. That's the whole goal if you do MDM and IDP correctly. Welcome, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all automation based on identities and simple actions such as creating a new user, creating all action in Cascade and at scale to ease your work. That's the value behind Brabus, the promise we have uh, behind it and how we think the product should be useful. And I'm basically at the end of the demo time and as I've said, uh, the product is just a year old. No, the product is a month old. The code base is a year old. <laughs> uh, so it's like beginning of the road for us. And to give you an idea of what's coming next, and by next we say we count as a startup in weeks or months, basically. Um, upcoming will be 
Uh, well, funny thing with the WWDC, we are trying, we are now able to use uh, managed Apple IDs and to integrate with OpenID Connect. So of course we didn't implement OpenID Connect, but SAML. So we will implement OpenID Connect <laughs> in the few weeks, in the next weeks, to support um, managed Apple ID integration and being able to propose some funny thing related to uh, bring your own device because. As soon as you have managed the policies, you can do um, user-driven, uh, account-driven uh, enrollment for your personal devices in AMDM, which we we'll look at as soon as we can integrate with, with Apple IDs. Because right now, if you do it with Apple IDs, it requires a password, and we don't like passwords. So as soon as we have the integration with managed Apple IDs, you will be able to authenticate your managed Apple IDs with Bravas, which means we will be able to do um, account drive and user enroll for your personal devices using authorization token. And we will also support and uh, work really uh, quickly on the restriction part to propose some curated uh, configuration policy for security perspective in terms of restriction and etc. Of course, implementing VPP. And then starting on more uh, funny things such as service device, device which are single account but multi users, such as meeting rooms, for example. We will also work on the shared iPad support, especially in, in prevision for the education market, where we intend to be also. Um, and then we will work on multi session macOS, and I hope by the time we are here, uh, Apple will eventually propose something with managed Apple IDs for that. It will help us a lot. Uh, but anyway, writing an open directory module is not that complex. <laughs> and the rest of the roadmap, just to give you an idea, uh, we intend to be multi platform. Uh, in our opinion, same, way, same thing, there is no reason to have one MDM per platform. That's way too costly, way too complex, and leads to, um, to inadequate management. Your MDM platform must support all your, end, all your endpoints. You have to be in the same configuration um, system to view everything. And as much as you uh, expect from a platform, from a management platform, you need to have an abstract way to configure them all. And when I say I want a local passcode which is matching that complexity pattern, I want to say it in once for all platform. That's the job of MDM, to help IT to work at scales. It's not a matter of I'm not able to do it, I just don't want to do it on every single platform manually. The product is available now as a V0, so of course, with some uh, particularities, let's say. And I think I forgot to, you to show you one really important slide, actually. The last but not least, most important feature of the product. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, the, the product is available now. Um, we are making you pay per user and month. There is a promo code uh, valid and until the end of August, PSU 2024, 23, sorry, uh, and it's 30% off for a year. And we are um, counting per active user in your directory record, basically. Uh, and that's it. There is a dedicated Slack channel uh, on the Mac admin Slack, of course, uh, hashtag Bravas. Um, if you have questions, we are all here to answer. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> I do have this ah, yes. little thing. You. Yep. All right, uh, this is really exciting. So thank you for giving us that really great demo. I have an important question. Um, in the case that you have a user who forgets their credential or an admin who needs to administrate from a machine that is not their primary machine, they yep. leave their MacBook at home because 
you know, they're on vacation, but they get called into the office. I've had that happen. Yeah. Um, what are the mechanisms that you have to actually get that admin back in, or do they have to, uh, you know, go through another process? I know that you showed us that initial, uh, you know, send a code via email. Yep. Uh, is that is that the exact same thing for the password reset kind of model, or it, uh, yeah. authorize so, another device? Yeah. To, so basically, authorizing another device if you want to unroll a full device, it's the same thing, and also for all users that we manage, we can have also authorization token, so you can. Generate the code, copy it, and it actually uh, creates the mail with the enrollment token, the welcome message, etc. And you just have to send it to your team, to a team member, and being able to run all FIDO2 token or, or passkey for temporary access or general access, I mean. And then you can get rid of the key if it was a temporary yep. machine, and yep. you can just say, sorry, I don't trust that one anymore. Basically, here you see yeah. the list of all existing keys. Uh, so, so far we are just showing the hashtag and the, the serial number and the creation that. Uh, at one point we will propose like a small UI to name the keys, uh, but mainly if you look at the creation date, you are basically able to know where, which key is it and to delete it. And the same goes for the super admin account. It's in the configure section when you have uh, platform security here, you see uh, on the uh, below the access token for the specific super admin account which is a hidden account, and of course you, we don't uh, charge you for this one. And you also have the super admin role, because as any good people, you should work with NIMED account for everything. Mm -hmm. So you can create people, uh, give people, the grant people the right for super admin access. And as soon as you are doing that, people will use their normal account on their managed devices using certificate-based authentication to access the admin console of Bravas. Awesome. Other questions? I can throw the, the, the box at folks. Too close, it's not a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's really interesting that you have, well, if anyone's been at Mac Admins before, we know he has strong opinions. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just want to say it's cool to see uh, solutions that are uh, opinionated uh, about this, right? Like uh, we've, we've all used all this enterprise software that tries to do everything for everyone in every edge case situation, yeah. and it always leads to stuff that sucks. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to see where it goes. So sorry to be the guy that has a comment and not a question. But. Well, as, as we are used to say, uh, question is okay, and statement, you owe me another beer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's okay. <laughs> Other questions? I want to throw this. <laughs> You were showing Mac OS enrolling, or is it a good assumption that you cover all Apple devices? Yeah, all so well, right now we are covering all Apple devices in assigned mode, so mainly iOS and Mac OS, and as soon as we start on the service device, we will also have interesting things to do with Apple TV, of course. So right, right now it's iOS and Mac OS, and it just works the same, basically. Very cool, thank you. Other questions? Well, if no, we are good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.